going to walk you through complex ions here. Uh, specifically, we're going to look at their colors, how they obtain their colors, and why the colors are kind of what they are. Uh, right here, I've got three copper complexes. This is copper 2 plus complex with, the, with water ligands. This is with ammonia ligands, and this is with chloride ligands. So we're going to go through why these are colorful, what's happening that's causing this color to be you know, transmitted to my eye in the way that it is, and also why they're different for different ligands. So first of all, I want to go through and show you what colors get absorbed by these three ligands. So over here, I'm going to try and zoom out. I've got a Spectrovis Plus hooked up, and I've got my three solutions. Here's my ammonia my water ligand, light blue, and here is my chloride, green. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how they absorb light. So I'm going to take my blank out of here, and I'm going to go ahead and put in my green. Alright, let's go ahead and zoom in so we get a nice picture of that. So, it's not easy to make out, but what I have here is purple, blue, green, yellow, and orange and red light. And currently, the green section is not absorbing, which means that this, this machine is sending through white light through the sample. The greens and the yellows, a little bit of the blue, maybe a little bit of the orange, are passing through that sample, but the, the purple and the dark blue and the orange and the red are getting absorbed. So the color that you're seeing is the one that's transmitted. The other ones are being absorbed, uh, and, and therefore we see that the green is transmitted and the other colors are absorbed. If I switch that out, We put in our light blue solution, our copper with water. We're going to see the light blue is not getting absorbed. It's being transmitted. So are some of the colors in the, in the neighboring regions, but that the red is being absorbed. So there's a complementary relationship with the colors where one will get absorbed and one will get transmitted. Here's our royal blue. Now this one's not going to work very well because it's so dark that it's going to absorb a lot of light. But again, you can see that the blue being transmitted along with some of the violet, and then the other colors are getting absorbed to the point where they're kind of messing up the apparatus. Now, why is that happening? Why is it that this transmits the colors except for green, this, these transmit the colors except for blue? So, hopefully at this point you have an understanding that when we're looking at light, we're looking at electrons being promoted to a different state of motion, a different energy state, and then the electrons are, are coming back down and then giving that light back off in another direction. So transition metals are unique because when complex, something interesting happens. So transition metals, you're looking at d orbital occupation. And here we have a set of d orbitals. Here we have another picture of that side, here we have another picture of this side. And something that you may not notice, but, but I'm going to draw your attention to, is that some of the d orbitals are along the axis, and some of them are not. So this one is along the axis, this one is along the axis, but these three are not, they're in between the axes. So when you form a complex ion, what's going to happen is there's going to be a distortion of those five things. Now normally, Normally, we would represent these five d orbitals with five lines like this, and we would fill in arrows saying, hey, there's an electron in this particular orbital, and it'd be any one of these five because all five have the same energy. They have the same, not motion entirely, but the energy that results in that motion is the same, so we're at the same level. What complicates things is when you add ligands into the mix. So if I have a copper 2 plus ion, and I surround that copper 2 plus ion with some water molecules, and I form the complex ion. The complex ion, the ligands on this, are going to interact with each of these orbitals differently. And so instead of having five orbitals that are all degenerate, that are all the same in energy, three of them are going to interact along with things that are along the axis, or not along the axis, and two of them are going to interact with things that are along the axis more than the other ones. And so what's going to happen is, instead of having five degenerate orbitals, they're going to split into two that are one energy, and three that are another energy. And this is then not completely populated. So for copper 2 plus, we're looking at a 3d9 state. So we put our six down here, and then 
three up here, and that means that now an electron can transition between these, this gap that we've now created by putting a complex ion, by putting a ligand around that metal ion. Okay. So this gap happens to coincide with the visible range. And so for copper with water, that's absorbing that red or orange light, depending on how far apart those are split for that particular thing. Okay. So if we go back then, how do we get different colors out of this? So if instead of copper 2 plus with water, I put copper 2 plus with chlorides. And I'm going to make a new complex. So now I'm going to have copper with four chlorides. All right, now I have a green color. What's happening there is I'm changing the spacing because I'm putting a different source of electrons around that set of orbitals. So there's a repulsion between electrons. And so the, the electrons that are in whatever orbital state that's being repelled by this are going to shift when I put something else by them. But they're going to shift differently for the two that are along the axes and the three that are not. And so what's going to happen then is that I put in a bunch of things and I put them in, in a square planar manner. So they're going to go here, 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 and here. Well, that's going to affect this a lot more than this where they're in between the orbital states. There the electrons are not as close. So there's different repulsions there. And this one's going to be affected a lot because this one is along the axis. So when I put those four things here, 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 and here, or if they happen to be along the z-axis, there's going to be a significant change in that. And so what I end up happening then is now I'm going to have an even wider gap or a smaller gap. And so now when I transition between the two, now I'm going to be involving a different type of light. Now the energy gap is different. So now I'm saying instead of red light being absorbed, maybe yellow light being absorbed, I get that shift to a new color. Okay. Now, this is not something that you would be able to predict just by looking at. This is something that in the data book for the IB program, they actually list a spectrochemical series that tells you which ligands will cause wider shifts in orbital splitting and smaller shifts. But that's why I have three different colors for a copper ion complex because of the three different ligands, is that the electron source here is different than the electron source here. And that's going to cause the interactions for this to be different than the interactions for the water one. It might be the same particular shape. Okay. So there might be more or less repulsion with one set of ligands than another, and that's going to cause the orbitals to split even further. Okay. Now, there are also two other factors, or there is also another factor, and that is what's the shape of the ligands. So you may know that when you do complex ions, some of these form four ligand interactions, and some form six. Some form tetrahedral shape, some, some uh, square planar, some form octahedral, and some even do linear, which is two ligands. So let's say hypothetically, I don't think this is the case, but let's say I put six ammonias around there. Okay. So six ammonias is going to adopt an octahedral shape. But the chloride complex here might have gone into a tetrahedral state. So if we look back at our pictures then, for an octahedron and a tetrahedron, an octahedron is going to be along these axes, or we could really rotate this so it's in between the axes. Okay. But a tetrahedron is going to affect the other ones differently. So how you split also depends upon the shape of the ligands. If you have a tetrahedral split, that's going to be different than an octahedral split. You can see that here. This is a tetrahedral field. Here we have the three that are in between the axes going up in energy, and the other ones are going down in energy, the ones along the axes. That's flipped over here for an octahedral field, because now we're seeing more interaction with the two that are along the axis, and then less interaction for the three that are not along the axis. And so we get different splits. Now, as long as the gap between these is the same in energy, that's not going to matter. But for different ligands, that also is going to mean that there's going to be different energy gaps between them because of the electronic interactions. Okay? So if this gap actually changes in size, then the color of lights absorbed are going to be different, and that's going to make the color appear different to me for the light that's actually transmitted, that blend of light that comes through.
So to summarize that, complex ions with transition metals are going to be colorful because the d orbitals are affected unevenly by the electron density of the ligands. So when those ligands come in, they cause a shift where instead of having five degenerate d orbitals, I get twos and threes. And then electrons transitioning between those absorb and reflect visible light. And that means that the light transmitted will no longer be white, will no longer see a colorless solution. I will now only see the colors transmitted that are not absorbed in this particular transition. If you've ever done the experiment where you take a copper sulfate hydrate, you have like a little crucible and then there'll be some blue salt in there, and you heat it and drive away the water, that's going to go from being blue to being white. The reason for that is because you're removing the ligands around the copper ions, and that's causing the color to no longer uh, be blue because you're eliminating this distortion effect.